This week I was working on Dice Script. Dice Script is a digital board game where you get to explore a dungeon with your friends by throwing dice. So far in Dice Script, all of the enemies were simply cards in the environment because the game was made originally as a board game and I was making a digital version of it. But this week I got to implement all of the artwork for the game and I have a total of 20 enemies to implement, which means I have a choice. To give them some animation, like a little idol or something, I can either rig each one and then animate a little idol for each one, which is gonna take a lot of time, so I don't wanna do that. Or I can use some shader magic and animate them all at once with one shader. I'm gonna choose shader magic. Uh, the game was originally made in Unity, but I'm using Godot for purposes of this video. I've been really enjoying playing around with Godot, so I kind of want to make more content for it. I started by importing some of the art for the game and setting it up with a little enemy over here. I'm going to then come to my goblin. I'm going to set my goblin material to be a shader material, and I'm going to create a new shader, which I'm gonna call enemy. If I open my shader over here, it's a shader type spatial, means it's a 3D shader, and starts with a fragment. I'm gonna start by setting an albedo, which will be a 0.5 for all the values, which essentially means it has a gray color on its albedo, which is the color channel. What I wanna do to start with the shader is I want to make it a Toon Ramp cartoon shader because that's the style of the game. So I'm gonna start by doing a light function. And the light function is called for each light in Godot. In this case, I have an Omni light, but I also have a directional light that's just a blank. Otherwise, they give me a default directional light, which I don't want. So on light, if I say diffuse light, Equator 3, and I'm gonna do a, just a gray color on the diffuse light as well. So you can see here, now we have a little bit of a gray color on our character. I'm also going to copy over this material into this sphere over here, so I can see how the effects of what I'm doing are also in this sphere. So I'm gonna get a dot product, which I'm just gonna say float dot p for dot product, and a dot product is used to take two vectors and see the difference between them. So if the two vectors are pointing the same direction, the result's gonna be one. If we're pointing on exactly opposite directions, the result's gonna be minus one. And whatever other directions we have, it's gonna be a number between minus one and one. So I'm gonna do normal, which is the surface normal of the current space on the surface that the shader is evaluating. And then I'm going to do light, which is the direction, a vector of the direction of the light. So I'm just gonna do a vector free one over here and I'm gonna multiply by my dot product so I can kind of see better what's happening. So as we see now, we have white wherever the light is and black on the opposite direction. So these are values between minus one and one. If I move my light over here, you can see how this affects things. And right now I'm just doing diffuse light equals this, but if we want to be able to handle multiple lights, we need to say plus equal. So we're gonna be adding to each for each light. If I do this and I duplicate this, you can see that multiple lights are acting on our things. I want to use a tune ramp to actually add some more interesting effects to this lighting. And for that, I'm gonna need to sample from a texture. And my textures go from zero to one. I have values from minus one to one, and I multiply by 0 0.5, and now I have values from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So I add 0 0.5 to it, and now I have values between 0 and 1. And as we can see over here, this looks a little weird, but that's because we're seeing all the values between 0 and 1. So even in the back, there's still some light. But once we're sampling from our tune ramp, that's gonna be fine. First, I'm gonna make a uniform variable, which means I can access it from any of those methods. It's going to be a sampler 2D, which means it is a 2D texture that we can sample from. I'm gonna call it tomb ramp. And lastly, I'm going to let Godot know that this is a source color, so it knows that I'm trying to place a texture there. If I come over here on my goblin, on the material, shader parameters, now I have a space here for a tomb ramp. So I'm going to do a vector free ramp. This is going to be texture, and then I pass in the tomb ramp. And then I need to pass the UV, which part of the texture I want to sample. I only care about the X in this case. They essentially go from like a 0 to 1, left to right, so I'm only caring about the horizontal. So I'm going to use my dot product. 
and on the y value i'm just gonna place zero i also need to say i just want the xyz i don't care about alpha in this case so now what i'm going to do is for the diffuse light instead of multiplying by dot p i'm gonna multiply by ramp so i can see how that's looking you can see how closest to the light it's sampling from this side wherever it's closest to the shadow it's sampling from this side which gives a quite interesting lighting i can show you some different tomb ramps here so you can see how this affects with different ramps this one gives us a very distinct separation between each part. And this here is a little problem. Uh, what's happening here is it's going all the way through one side and coming through the other. So what I'm going to do here is where I'm going to use this uh, dot product, I'm going to do a clamp and I'm going to clamp between 002 and 098. So I'm ignoring like the values that are like all dark or all white. So I'm keeping it just in the middle of the texture. That solves this problem. Let's try a couple different ramps. It's funky. I adjusted the code a little bit to make it a little cleaner. So now I'm clamping on a different line. Now I'm missing a couple different things. One of them is the light color. So here with a more distinct light color, we can see how this is affecting. Uh, another part of the puzzle is the attenuation. And the attenuation shows the shadows from the light. I'm going to bring it a little closer here. So this is not from the ramp. This is just the effect of the attenuation. So it gives me the shadows and also some, uh, some information from the actual attenuation of my light. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the light color, I'm going to multiply by the ramp, and I'm going to multiply by the attenuation. I want the attenuation to pop a little bit more. So I'm going to multiply it by uh, 2. Yeah, I like how this uh, tune ramp is looking now. So this is our custom light. Our next step. I'm going to copy our sampler and I'm going to do an albedo and these are going to be the colors of my uh, model. So instead of doing the albedo like this, I'm going to do texture, albedo and I'm going to pass in the actual UV of the model. Important to just to use the XYZ in this case. So on our goblin material, we now have an albedo over here. I'm going to load the goblin texture and this is our little goblin. Now let's do a vertex function and here is where we're actually gonna animate our character so to start animating our character i'm actually gonna start by creating some more variables so i want to animate it horizontally this is gonna be a range from zero to one actually gonna be horizontal speed vertical speed and then horizontal amount vertical amount and for this speed, I'm actually gonna a little higher, so go from 0 to 10. On our goblin over here, I'm going to go to my shader parameters. Let's set, um, I'll do the double for vertical speed. We'll do like a 0 0.3 for each amount. On our vertex, let's say horizontal value is going to be equal cosine. So I want a wave pattern, so I'm going to use sine and cosine of this value. I'm going to take time, multiply by my horizontal speed. Outside, I'm going to multiply this by my horizontal amount. So what this is doing is the horizontal speed is speeding up the time, which makes my wave go faster. And this wave is a wave between minus one and one. So I'm multiplying by my horizontal amount to limit this wave. I'm gonna go for my vertex X. I'm gonna do a plus equal horizontal value. So that should animate my character horizontally. But as you can see, the character is literally sliding side to side. We only want to apply this animation at the top part. We want the feet to keep planted on the ground. Plus equal horizontal value times vertex.y. Why am I doing vertex.y? Because my goblin starts at zero, then goes higher from there. So zero values are gonna zero out the values I'm doing at the bottom. The closer to the bottom, the less he's gonna be animating. And that's a start. Our guy is doing a little dance, but it'll be more interesting with a vertical dance as well. I'll do vertex.y, vertical value is vertex.y, because we also want to filter out the bottom. There you go. Aye, go. Aye, more passion, more passion, more energy, more footwork. That's an interesting dance. I think we can adjust a little bit, so like a little bit less vertical amount. So one interesting thing too is that, uh, as you can see, the ball is dancing exactly the same dance as the goblin. And that's not really what I want. I'm going to make the material on the ball unique. And I'm going to create another float, uniform float. 
I'm gonna make this a randomized value. I'm going to add this randomized value to the time. Load randomized time, time plus randomized value. So if I change this number for each of the enemies, then each of them will do a slightly different offset dance. So I'm gonna replace my time by randomized time. Now, if I come over here to my shader parameters and I say like a five in different dances, I can also, to make it a little different, each material could also be doing a different horizontal speed. It's a very different dance. Essentially, this is most of it. There's one more thing I would like to do to the shader. The way I have the game in uh, Unity, most of the time we're seeing the game from up here. Whenever we zoom in on a dungeon, we're looking from the top. So what I would like to do is to skew the enemy a little bit back. And in the game, you don't even notice that the enemy is very skewed, but you can tell you can see the difference and you'll see it in a moment. So first I'm gonna create a skew over here, which I'll use my skew value and I'm gonna multiply it by vertex.y as well, because I also want to filter it out the bottom of the character. Now to skew the character, I actually want to use the Z axis because my camera in the game is always coming from here. So I'm gonna need to convert these vertex positions into world positions. And how do I do this? So I'm gonna do a vector form and I'm gonna call it a world position. And to get my world position, I need to take the model matrix and I'll multiply it by my vertex position. The model matrix is a matrix four by four, so it expects a vector four. So we need to say vector four, vertex one. And that should give me a world position for each of the vertex. So I'm going to do world position Z because that's the axis we want. I'm gonna do plus equal skew. Now, to actually see the result of this, we're gonna need to convert this back into a vertex position. So I'll do vertex equal, I'll take the inverse of the model matrix, because if we use the model matrix to convert into world, we use the inverse of it, convert into vertex position. So here, vertex is expecting just XYZ, so I need to cast it to XYZ. So now, as you see, I have a little bit of a skew value here, and we can see the difference. For looking down on the screen, this way we actually see more of our character. We, without the skew, we're only seeing really his helmet. Now, doing this, there's another thing I would like to do. I would like my dance to be consistently on the x-axis horizontally. So when I'm looking this way, I don't want him dancing in the z-axis. So I'm going to copy this over. I'm gonna put this at the end. And instead of doing vertex positions over here, we're gonna do world positions. So now our character dance is always on the world X, no matter where he's looking, which I find more, more appealing this way. And that's it. And that's how I animated like 10 characters in just 10 minutes. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a comment and let me know what else you'd like to see on this channel. This is very new to me and I'm still trying to figure things out. And if that script seems interesting to you, please check it out on Steam. Give me a wish list, it helps a lot. And I'll see you next time.